Okay, this video is meant to introduce basic chopping technique using a chef's knife. Now, the reason I'm making this video is uh, because my mother-in-law, Catherine, is a very good cook, but I've seen her prepping vegetables with this kind of tiny little knife, which is really hard to use in my opinion. Um, this is great for a picnic because it has a cover that um, will let you drop it in a bag without cutting anything, but this is not the kind of uh, item you should be using in your home kitchen because it's really not very efficient. And we'll see why in this video. Anyway, so here to, for this demonstration, I have a uh, eight-inch chef's knife. That's pretty standard. And um, before I'm going to show uh, chopping some different items, like what technique you use. But first, I'm going to show why this type of knife is uh, is versatile and, and useful um, for chopping vegetables. And the thing to note, things to notice about this are uh, first of all, um, you'll see that it has a tall blade, right? The reason why that tall blade is useful. And important is because it lets you get your knuckles underneath the handle, lets you grip the knife and cut while still having room for your knuckles underneath the knife when you're in the down position. So you can do this kind of quick chopping motion on the board, on the cutting board, and not have to uh, move your hand out of the way. So with a tiny knife like this, your knuckles are going to um, prevent the blade from coming all the way down when you're chopping. Okay, so with this knife, you have to, if you want to use a board, you have to hold it really awkwardly like this, which is really hard on your hands, or you have to do something like, you have to use this kind of motion where you're kind of slicing, and that's really actually hard and inefficient. So coming back to the chef's knife, uh, it has a tall blade. It also has a very long and curved blade. The reason why that's important is because it allows you to use this rocking motion. So the curve lets the knife rock down, and the long length lets you put a lot of pressure and, and, and weight on the tip of the knife and then um, chop down like this and actually impart a lot of force uh, very accurately without a lot of effort. And finally, uh, the other thing you'll notice about uh, when you hold a knife like this is that it's, it's pretty heavy. It has a, a thick blade and also a thick handle. So um, you might think that makes it harder to chop, but actually it makes it easier to chop because um, the weight of the knife itself will um, will give you momentum to slice through the vegetables easily without having to um, generate all the force from your hand with a smaller knife. Okay. So uh, you'll also notice I'm using a cutting board, of course. You don't need a huge cutting board, but you probably would want to have one at least this big. This one is uh, 9 inches by 15 inches, so it's still pretty small and you know easy to get into the sink to wash. Uh, it's not a huge cutting board. I also have one that's twice the size, which is, I guess, uh, more convenient when you're chopping a lot, but then it's harder to wash. Right, so um, let's uh, chop a few a few vegetables uh, using this knife just to get an idea of what the technique is, is like. So I'm going to start off with celery. And celery is something that is really going to, uh, you're going to see a big difference chopping something like this with a chef's knife compared to a small knife. Because you can actually chop a lot of celery at once with this big blade um, using the chopping technique. So um, again, I'm going to put, put the weight, uh, put a lot of weight on the tip of the knife. The tip of the knife is, is, is touching the cutting board. And then I'm going to just basically do this up and down with my right hand while feeding it in with my left hand. So first I'm going to take the, the ends off, which are garbage. And then in just a few seconds, I can chop all um, four stalks of celery, as you can see, right? And it's not hard. Okay, actually, I'm, I guess I'm moving my hand, uh, my right hand, cu cutting hand over as I do this rather than moving the celery. If you had a bigger board, you could move the celery. That might be a little more efficient. But, um, okay, that was celery. So that's uh, much easier than chopping it with a small, if you're using a small knife, you would probably um, have to do one stalk at a time and kind of pull your, the knife across as you're chopping, which would involve a lot of hand movement, arm movement and uh, be kind of tiring. Uh, the next item I'm going to chop is, uh, is an herb. So this is dill. So again, I can use the same uh, technique of uh, just kind of like putting weight on the tip of the knife and, and moving up and down. And I can come in at different angles. Another thing you can do is, in this case, I'm putting uh, my left hand on top of the front of the knife to stabilize it and chop in the other direction because it's a little awkward uh, Chopping down um, in this sideways position, it, 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 I get less stability from my right hand. So adding my left hand to the top uh, makes it easier. I can come across in the other direction, and I've chopped all that dill now. 
um, very finely. And you'll see that I can chop very quickly without any danger of like cutting myself. I can chop very quickly and accurately because all, all the weight, um, there's a lot of weight on this front part of the knife, which really stabilizes it. Okay, and that's, that's, that's the, the advantage of, of this technique. Um, it's, very, it's both stable and fast. Um, okay, that was dill. So, uh, one more or two more things. Okay, an onion, obviously this is something that is uh, commonly used in soups and whatnot, right? And sometimes it's uh, difficult to chop because it's kind of big, right? There's different opinions. I've seen, if you check a cookbook, you'll probably see a, rec a different recommendation for how to chop an onion um, to dice it. There's a technique where that you go in from the side and, um, but I, I don't like that because I feel like it's kind of unsafe and slow. So this is, I'm gonna show you a really fast way to peel an onion using a chef's knife. Um, just take, I chopped it in half so that I could more easily take off the outer skin. Okay, now that I've done that, I can just, um, you know, I'm, I've placed it down and I'm gonna chop uh, rings off. Again, I'm using the same motion that I used for the two other items. Once I get close to the end, I'm not gonna continue because I, I risk cutting my fingers there. So I'm actually gonna put this thing on the side, this last piece on the side and chop it down that way. And once I have, so now I have all these sort of semi-medallions, uh, slices, I guess is what these are called. And I'm gonna turn it sideways and chop them up in the other direction to get something that is close to a diced result. It's not precisely diced. Um, okay, now I'm using a slightly different technique. This is just kind of improvised. Um, I'm, I'm rocking in both directions. That kind of works too. Um, and you know, it's not, this technique wasn't perfect. You see some pieces haven't been cut precisely, but this is good enough for like soups and, and uh, stir fries and stuff. Okay, so um, that's that. I guess I won't bother to do the other half of the onion. That's just the same technique. Um, finally, um, I'm gonna show uh, chopping a chestnut, which is kind of unusual, but this will highlight one of the benefits of having a really heavy knife. So chestnuts, if you've um, ever tried to cook these, um, one common way to cook them is to give them a little slice and, and bake them in the oven and then peel them. But another thing you can do is you can add these to any, uh, like to a roasted vegetable dish and uh, raw and, and then cook them in the oven. But first you have to get this really tough, this is this t exterior the shell is really tough. It's hard to get into, but with a heavy knife like this, um, what I can do is um, I can actually just like s chop it really hard. And uh, the knife, because the way the knife will let, let me chop through it in one go really easily, right? So doing that with a small knife would be really nearly impossible. You know, you could try to push hard and you could probably pierce through it with this kind of knife, but you'd be putting a lot of effort into it. Your hands would be in there. You'd risk cutting your fingers. So it's a lot easier and safer with a big knife, even though it might seem like doing this kind of a motion is dangerous, but it's not because you're just, you, your hands are, are not in the way when you're chopping down. Okay. That was the chestnut. Um, so finally, um, let me, again, you know, the, uh, to review the benefits of using a chef's knife and, that, and this uh, cho ch rocking chopping technique is that it's faster, it's safer. Um, I see that when people use small knives, they tend to like get their second hand in really close when they're chopping because it's, uh, they need, it's difficult to, to control and that le leads to more um, chance of ch cutting yourself. With this, uh, the large chef's knife technique, you're always cutting into a, a board. So you do need a cutting board, but the advantage of that is that your other hand is, is generally pretty far clear of where you're cutting. And it's easier on your hands. Even though it's a bigger knife, it requires less effort to get a lot of force chopping down because you have more, um, there's more range over which you're exerting force. You can generate momentum and cut through the vegetable pretty easily. But that said, you know, a knife like this is not, is not perfect for everything. It's not ideal for everything. And that's why uh, knife sets include many different knives. Um, so uh, for example, like a bread knife is, is much better for cutting bread because it's serrated and that lets you um, more easily uh, slice through bread. Um, here's another bread knife. You know, you notice they're both serrated. 
Also, pairing knives are quite different. This is also a long knife. This is maybe uh, six and a half inches, but it's very thin and narrow, so it, it bends. It flexes quite a bit, which the chef's knife doesn't bend at all because it's very thick. Okay, so this flexible knife will let you, like you know, uh, uh, cut around the rind of a cantaloupe or something like that. So for fruit, this is really good. I also have small pairing knives, which also are, are flexible and good for um, detailed work, you know, hulling strawberries, things like that, right? But um, your typical small um, inflexible knife is really not very useful in the kitchen. Um, you know, something that looks like a steak knife, but is uh, not serrated. This is really not very useful in my opinion. All right, so I hope that was helpful and happy cooking.